here at the Lee and Lee booth, Computex 2018. We're gonna start things off with something you've probably seen flooding your inboxes lately about RGB cables, the next big trend. But guys, I'm, I'm being serious with you here. I really think these are gonna take off because they look so freaking good. I know they probably look really good on camera too. I'm trying to show you as, as decent a B-roll shot as I can right now of these cables, but in person, they look immaculate. They are, I can confirm, called the streamers, despite their odd spelling, not streamer or strimer. Uh, so I think streamer makes a bit more sense. We got the 24 pin cable here. We've got uh, eight pin VGA cables, six pin VGA cables in production. You'll see those soon, as well as eight pin EPS up top. So you can fully RGB your main uh, graphics card and motherboard cables for your next RGB build. Now this is the meat of the Lee and Lee party. This is the Land Cool one. We teased this a little bit at CES 2018. Uh, they were asking for feedback how to improve this case before it went into production because of course they want this to be something that the consumer wants to buy. Uh, so you'll find many improvements with the official Land Cool 1 is what it's dubbed. And I'm gonna start first with just some of the hardware support you'll find in this case. You have an idea of what you can potentially build in this beautiful chassis that comes in at between 89 and 99 bucks depending on the options you want inside. So starting with fan and radiator support, of course that's a big uh, option to consider when purchasing, especially a mid-sized tower case like this one. There are seven PCI slots at the rear, by the way. Uh, you can fit up to three 120 mil fans or a 360 mil radiator, whatever you want to work up front, or two 140 mil fans. Up top, same thing. You can fit three 120 mil fans, but not really a radiator because it's you know the radiators are a bit longer than the fans themselves. Uh, now RAM clearance, if you're worried about that up top, uh, Jameson did tell me that they were able to fit Trident Z RAM in here from G-Skill, but if you want something like Team Group Nighthawk DDR4, because they have the little fins that stick up higher on the sides, might be cutting it close. Uh, so you know anything Trident Z height or lower should be fine with the fan rad combo up front because everything is shifted closer to the left side of the case. Uh, a few more things I want to point out. The first is that you have rubber grommets here on the right. This actually supports up to EATX because things are pushed a little further right than usual. If you look at some of the competitors, the practical design cases that I've reviewed, uh, this little indention here, which is great for cable management, we'll talk about in a second, is pushed a little further to the left, which limits you to just ATX motherboards here. Full size EATX, not a problem. Uh, and then uh, up top, if you're interested in support for fans and whatnot, you can access all of that with this little magnetic clip here. Uh, so you can mount your fans here. You can of course mount uh, 140s if you want as well, but only two of those because the case is not uh, very long in terms of depth. But this is again just a very nice magnetic clip back on and an integrated dust filter is included. Now sliding around the back, this is where things get especially interesting. So only two thumb screws here. You can use Phillips heads if you want, uh, but that's all it takes. Just two of them because it does slot in down below. And the cool thing is it's got this similar hinge design to what other Lee and Lee cases have done in the past with you know your cable management bar at the right side. Here though, all you gotta do is slide the entire panel into the base and then it just clips on like that. Much easier if you have a lot of cables back here. We all know how difficult it is to get this panel to slide in from the back, right? Because you're pushing all the cables forward. You're not actually pushing them into the chassis. Uh, so with this design here, you just smush them all in if you have a problem with that, though I don't think you will, uh, because we do have, again, that indention I mentioned earlier for the front of the case. You can mount SSDs up here if you want, or you can slide these behind the motherboard tray uh, and then just stuff all the cables you want up here. About an inch worth of clearance, so two or three centimeters, plenty for a case of this caliber. The case also has three large cutouts up top, so I presume you'd have some, uh, you know, band headers running through here, uh, maybe some uh, RGB cables and whatnot through the middle one, and then, of course, your 8-pin EPS on the top right. Good to see all of those inclusions. If we swing the case around again, I know we're doing a full 360 here, but I want to give you guys the rundown of this case as much as possible without actually building in it and giving you an official review. Uh, up front here, this is actually aluminum and it has been CNC'd all the way around, so it looks beautiful. We get that like chrome kind of finish around the edges. Really like that, going back to the roots there with the aluminum touch. The other big thing that you'll get in the $99 edition, if you look up top here, we have front I.O. Just kind of tilt the case forward probably be a little better to see. Uh, we have Type-C on the far left. We have the hard drive LED indicator here. Uh, we have the LED button that controls the RGBs at the front of the case, a power button, USB, I think these are gonna be 3.0, 
And then we have headphone jack, microphone jack, and then another USB uh, 3.0 port on the far right. So again, the Type-C port is included in the $99 edition. You forego that in the $89 one. In my opinion, you should pay the extra 10 bucks. You get the addressable RGB LEDs, uh, and you get Type-C. So if you want to stay up to date, this is, uh, you know, this is a new thing everyone's so worried about. Here it is in the $99 Land Cool one. Now, I'm sure you all remember the O11 Air, an improvement upon the original PC O11 that I actually built my first custom loop in. You also probably know about the O11 Dynamic by now. I built one of my custom loops in that case, uh, the white version. I have the black one sitting in the studio now. This is the final revision of the O11 Air, and I think it looks even better than it did at CES. Again, you have the same simple mechanisms to remove and uh, reinstall those uh, side panels, the top panel, the front panel, all completely toolless. It's a beautiful design. I'm glad they stuck with it. And I want to see this in cases from all manufacturers. Frankly, I think Lian Lee is leading the way here. Uh, and if you are not familiar with the Dynamic or the Air, things are pretty, uh, pretty unique in here. You got the PSU going on the backside behind the motherboard tray. You can mount three 120 mil fans here, three 120 here, three 120 here, and three 120 here. So what, a uh, total of 12 120 mil fans, and you can also fit radiators in almost all these slots as well together. I think you can, you probably, uh, I don't know if you can fit a radiator here and here. I'll have to ask about that. You might not be able to put them side by side, but I know you can do at least one on top, one on bottom, and one at the back. So if you wanna just, you know, deck this case with rads and fans, you can certainly do it. Plenty of space in here, plenty of airflow. A big uh, topic, especially in 2017, was airflow. This case prioritizes it thanks to that kind of grill mesh front panel. And if you're wondering, this one too, oh no, this one's screwed in. Okay, maybe this one doesn't uh, remove the same way, but two simple screws on top here, slide it off. You have access to the front. If you want to install fans or rads up front, uh, certainly possible. And again, on the back side of the case, if you want to remove the right side panel, plenty of space back there as well for uh, just tons of cables. You can be absolutely ludicrous with your cable management, not care really much about anything back here, although I don't recommend you do that, and still have room to spare because of the way this case is designed. Now this table here doesn't have a name yet, but it is self-raising. According to the menu up front there, it's adjustable uh, with built-in motors, beautiful tempered glass with a very nice metallic frame. Supports up to 80 kilograms. I could sit on this thing. Actually, more than me could sit on this thing. You can build an entire PC inside of it, show it off to all your friends. I really want one of these just to build on. I think it would be a great like B-roll table uh, and build table. Probably doesn't do it justice, but I think it looks sexy on camera. And here's the best kicker. It only costs, apparently, $999, which I find hard to believe because some IKEA self-raising desks are about the same price. Uh, so if that's the case, I actually think they're gonna sell a lot of these despite being a $1,000 table. It's one of the best value $1,000 tables I've ever seen. Now we're gonna end things here at the Lee and Lee booth here at Computex 2018 with the O11 Dynamic Revision in a partnership of sorts with Razer. I talked about in the Deep Cool video how I like seeing companies work together and this is this is Nirvana, folks. This looks so good. I already love the way the Dynamic looked uh, to begin with and I love what Razer has done, what they've included uh, working with Lee and Lee here to make it just RGB-ified even more. You guys know Razer Chroma, their keyboards, their peripherals, headsets, all that is all RGB synced. Uh, and you can use Razer Synapse software to control these RGB LEDs, both uh, shining through here, which you'll see on the left side of the tempered glass up front, and underneath to give it a subtle glow on the bottom. Really crisp, looks great. I love it in sync with all the other RGB stuff we've got in the case. Uh, and again, if you don't want RGB, change it to whatever you want. That's the joy of RGB. I know it gets old seeing this stuff over and over, but it looks clean if you set it to the color profile you want. That's all from the Lee and Lee booth here at Computex 2018. Stay tuned for the rest of our coverage. A couple more days worth of hunting, finding booths, finding suites, and checking out the new tech. This is Science Studio. Thanks for traveling with us.